Anybody want to else to talk? Still here. Okay. Okay. Okay, thanks for uh, joining the Citizen, Citizens Academy. I hope you're uh, learning a lot. So I'm here to be part of the discussion on elected officials. Specifically for me, I'm going to talk about local, municipal elected officials. At that level, there are 13 uh, positions that uh, are voted on in Shorewood. We've got uh, our school board, five members, and uh, the uh, village trustees, there's seven members, including the president, because the president is actually a trustee, different from uh, the way it works with cities and city councils. Um, and then we also do an election for municipal judge, too. On the school board, the president is selected by his or her fellow board members. By contrast, the president of the village board is elected to that position by the voters. Note that the school board sets the annual tax levy for the school district, while the village board sets the annual tax levy for municipal services. If you're a property owner, about 45% of your tax bill goes to the schools, and about 25% goes to the village. The remainder is shared between the county, Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewage District, the Milwaukee Area Technical College, and the state. Mr. President, could you say that amount again? I'm sorry, what? Could you say that those numbers again one more time for us? About uh, the numbers you just told us one more time? Okay. I'm sorry. I said that uh, about 25% of your property tax goes to, to the village for village services, and 45% goes to the uh, uh, school district. And then the remainder is shared. And this is typical for most communities, too. I mean, it's not exactly the same on all of them, but it works out close to that. So now I'm going to give you a little background on me, and I think I'm doing this to, you know, kind of encourage people who want to become involved in things, just to see how, over time, I got involved in things. So both my wife, Mary, and I grew up in the Milwaukee area. Mary graduated from Shorewood High School. I have an engineering degree from Marquette and an MBA from UWM. I worked for a Milwaukee manufacturing firm, Harnischweger Industries, for over 20 years, including 10 years out in Philadelphia. Our two sons were born while we were out east. We moved back to Wisconsin in 1981 and bought the house we lived in for 34 years on Charlotte Boulevard. Our boys both went through the Shorewood school system from kindergarten through high school. They both went to UW-Madison, and now one lives in the Twin Cities and the other in Vermont. We have four grandchildren, two in each location. In 1989, I switched careers and became director of the executive MBA program at the Lubar School at UWM. I retired from there in 2010, so I don't have a day job anymore. After being empty nesters for over 14 years, we moved to the Eastwood Condos in Shorewood a couple of years ago. We love it there. Heated garage, elevator, and think about tomorrow. No shoveling. <laughs> no mowing. <laughs> we were ready. When I transferred back to Wisconsin in 72, we looked at Shorewood, Wauwatosa, and Whitefish Bay as possible places to live and talking with many people that I talked to in Shorewood, this is not an untypical uh, way to look when you're moving here from, you know, out of state. The schools, the neighborhood, the walkability, the lake, and of course the availability of the perfect house made Shorewood our choice. Uh, how and why I got on the village board? Maybe it started with me being elected to uh, class president at Edison Junior High School over 50 years ago. But seriously, it was really an incremental thing. I gradually started getting more involved in the community over time. Much of it had to do with our kids. I became the Cub Scout and then the Boy Scout leader. I helped my wife teach Sunday school for a few years and got elected to the church council. We helped out at the St. Robert Fair. 
I became a member of the strategic planning effort for the Shortland School District when Jack Linehan was superintendent in the mid-90s. I was treasurer of the Shorewood Booster Club and on the committee that raised the funds for the Shorewood Fitness Center. Then in 1998, a year after my youngest finished high school, <coughs> a couple of community stalwarts took me out for coffee at City Market and convinced me to run for village trustee. I've been on the village board ever since, becoming the village president in 2006. Um, I'm kind of a glass half full positive guy. I serve because I think Shorewood is a gem and I want to give back to the community. I like interacting with residents. It can be a lot of work, but we have a well-defined vision, a financial plan that is well thought out and constantly updated, and we have solid ideas for where we want to be with our neighborhood initiatives, our business district, and capital improvements. We have a great staff, starting with our village manager, Rebecca Ewald, who we met last week. We put together an excellent team of capable department heads that make sure what an outstanding place to live. Finally, I've enjoyed making friends with many outstanding fellow trustees over the past 20 years. It's a lot of folks that care for Shorewood and give selflessly of their time. The next couple of slides may be of interest to you. Listed are the village presidents going back to the beginning in 1900. And I got it on two slides, it didn't all fit on one here. Um, some items of note, uh, it looks like the three-year terms really didn't get started until 1930, as you can see in the beginning. Uh, the presidents lasted one year each. I, they probably just picked among themselves who the president was going to be among, amongst the trustees. Note that the name changed to Shorewood during uh, President von Riesen's term. In, yeah, actually, it was 1917, yeah. And then, really of interest is seeing what happened when uh, <coughs> President Hubbard, and we've got Hubbard Park in Shorewood. And, uh, but uh, Shorewood basically grew up at that time. He was president from 1920 to 1932, and the population went from 2,650 to over 13,000 which is basically the population of Shorewood in 82. There were uh, probably, during some of those years in the 1920s, there were over 200 houses being built every year. Also, the first village, uh, the first professional village manager was appointed when uh, William Hubbard was president. That was in 1928. They stole the former city manager of Kenosha to become the first village manager here in Shorewood. Pay particular attention to the populations, starting at 325, and what we talked about growing up in the, uh, the 1920s. And you know, flip to the next page. We peaked in. Uh, the, the 1950 census, I'm not sure exactly when the peak was, but the 1950 census had us at uh, over 16,000. And uh, that's probably mainly due to uh, six kids to a house was not unusual at that time. And this was the post-World post War II era. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Cities and villages are creatures of the state. We exist because of state statutes that grant us broad authority to govern ourselves in local matters without state interference. The term used to describe this grant is home rule. Cities and villages have different structures. A city has a mayor and a common council. The common council consists of alder persons elected in districts. 
The mayor is elected at large and serves as the chief executive officer of the municipality. The common council serves as the legislative body. By contrast, a village consists of a village board made up of trustees and the village president, who is also one of the trustees. The village board as a whole serves as both the executive officer and the legislative body of the village. The village president and the trustees are all elected at large. City mayors have more power than village presidents. A mayor has veto power. And while a mayor presides at common council meetings, he or she only votes in case of a tie. In contrast, village presidents are trustees. The president <coughs> presides at village board meetings, but is not considered the chief executive officer of the village. Village presidents do not have veto power, and they vote on all measures that come before the board. As village president, I also serve as chair of the plan commission, a member of the Board of Directors of the North Shore Fire Department, I'm currently chair of that, and uh, the Shorewood representative on the Milwaukee County Intergovernmental Cooperation Council. That's a group that meets once a month at uh, various locations in the, different, the, the 19 different municipalities, and uh, it consists of the mayors and village presidents of all of the municipalities. What did I do? Okay, um, this slide shows our uh, current makeup of the village board. Uh, each member serves a three year term. There are no term limits. Each trustee, as I said before, is elected at large. That is, each one represents the entire community, not just a, a ward or a district. The village board me meetings are held in the courtroom on the first and third Mondays of every month, starting at 7.30 p.m. Meetings are open to the public and can be viewed later on video feed through a link on the village website. There are uh, six standing committees that review village board issues and policies prior to village board meetings. We do this immediately before the meeting on the Mondays that we have the meetings. Uh, the, there are three trustees that serve on each of these six committees. The committees are the Judiciary Personnel and Licensing, the Public Works, Strategic Initiatives, Budget and Finance, Public Safety, and Community and Business Relations. that uh, residents can connect with the village board. Um, we have our meetings that you can attend. Um, you can contact us by email. You can send letters to the village hall. These are things that happen quite a bit. Um, probably more emails now than letters, but there are people that still do the old way. Uh, you can phone the village manager and ask her for messages to board members. You can meet board members at public events. You can contact trustees via email or phone. You can sign up for the manager's weekly memo, and I'm sure you've talked about that already, or if you haven't. You that's too, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a future. Okay. If you're not, that's a must. Um, and then participate in periodic village wide surveys. We typically try to conduct surveys about once every three years or so. And there might be some uh, specific ones that might come in between that time, too. And then it's always important to become acquainted with the village website. In 2018, which we're just uh, getting well launched into now, we've got a number of major initiatives that we're working on. And uh, these are some of the bigger ones. 
We've got the Wilson Drive reconstruction, which is going to be getting, beginning very shortly. Lake Drive resurfacing, which will probably be happening uh, after uh, July 4th, because we don't want it to upset the July 4th celebration at Atwater Park. Um, we're working on phase two of the new police building that moved to uh, the old AB data, ABB data um, building on Wilson Drive. Uh, we're uh, initiating a human relations, I should say almost reinitiating a human relations commission, which uh, we had a number of years ago, and there's a, uh, an initiative to get that uh, restarted again. And uh, briefly, what is a human relations commission? Briefly, I'm going to let you answer that yeah. one better. Uh, so basically, it's a a, 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 a board um, that if if a resident has an inquiry or wants further education on some resources when it comes to um, a matter, uh, it, it could be you know based on 